Well, first you have to have happy customers, and a lot of them who are willing to pay um, for your product at a decent margin. So it starts there. If you have a business that has accelerating revenues, that's always exciting to a potential buyer because then they can project that into the future. If you have a business that has um, many customers, um, neither, none of which would take you out of business if they walked away, that's exciting. It's called customer concentration risk. Um, recurring revenues is a big deal. So you don't have to go beat your head against the wall every day to make a new sale. But if you've got uh, installment customers, so they're, they're with you for a year, or they're with you for five years, or you have um, automatic renewals, that's exciting because it makes the sales process more efficient. Um, if you have um, high margin sales in an area of, um, of growth, for example, if you're selling healthcare products or expertise right now with the Affordable Care Act, for the foreseeable future, that's going to be a growth industry. So that's another thing that you could sort of set yourself up for. Um, having a realistic set of, um, of objectives, highly important. How much money do you want? When do you need it? Who else needs to be part of this decision? Are there employees or particular types of relationships that need to be protected during the process? You need to think about that before conversations about a, a business transaction um, occur. Those are just some of the considerations. There's, there's detailed checklists on, so you're, and again, you can Google this. So you're thinking of selling your company. And some of those thoughtful articles work backwards. They talk about what you want your option to be at the end, and then they, they walk you through a process of the questions you need to ask, and the better articles will also address how do you do that? How do you take something from here to where you want it to be?